Welcome to Lodging On Demand. In this special episode, Lodging Editor-in-Chief Dennis Nessler speaks with David Pepper, Chief Development Officer with Choice Hotels at the Lodging Conference 2023 in Phoenix. Hi, this is Dennis Nessler, Editor-in-Chief of Lodging Magazine. I'm here with David Pepper, Chief Development Officer at Choice Hotels. How are you doing, David? Doing great. Good. Thanks Yourself? for being with us. Good. How's the conference going for you? Oh, it's always fun. Yeah. Uh, here they have uh, uh, one of the largest uh, attendants, so you know people are looking to get into hotel business. Things are good. Absolutely. So lots going on at Choice these days. Uh, you guys have kind of been doing the integration of Radisson over the last year plus. Um, kind of talk about how that's going and, and maybe some of the opportunity out in the marketplace with regards to Radisson. Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, we closed on the transaction a year ago. And we've already, within a year, have already integrated all the Radisons into the Choice Reservation System. Uh, and now we're bringing them on to our, uh, our technology, our, our property management system. So in one year's time, to be able to, uh, to combine our loyalty programs and get them on the Choice platform is a real big success. And it's really great for the owners. The, the, we're, the country and owners, the Radisson owners, all the Radisson brands uh, are really excited because they're, they're now able to use our technology and they're already starting to see a lot of cost savings for themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, our res system is much, much less expensive uh, than what they were using before. Uh, they're also uh, now attached to our, our loyalty and to our reservation system. So, you know, not so much a relying on OTAs. Right, uh, right. And so the owners are really happy uh, with that and it's starting to see the savings at the hotel. Uh, and that's even before we even start bringing the revenue. So, uh, so real happy. Uh, they're real happy. And then we see a lot of opportunity with the Radisson brands. Uh, right now, we're really focused on Radisson Blue. Radisson and Country Inn. Okay. Uh, Radisson, look, you're around this conference, you're hearing everybody talking about refinancings are coming up. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these are going to be in the full service area. A lot of hotels coming up for refi. Their interest rates are going to double. Probably haven't done a PIP right. since before COVID. Right. Uh, so the equity is really not there. So you're seeing a lot of hotels being put up for sale. And there's a real good opportunity. Banks need a story. Uh, and so if they can go and go to the banks and say, look, I'm going to buy this hotel, I'm going to convert it to a Radisson. Now it's not going to be 70% of two other brands we usually talk about. Uh, <laughs> that uh, you know, we could be the only Radisson yeah. in this location and be the only one on the reservation system. Uh, it, it really gives an opportunity so uh, for these owners and, and for the banks. So we see a real opportunity for Radisson uh, going forward. And then Country Inn, we're really going to position it right there in that upper mid scale. It's a really consistent brand. There's 450 of them. Uh, we're going to keep it to new construction mm-hmm. uh, and really make it a good, consistent product. Yeah, and Radisson Blue is more on the upscale side. Radisson Blue is in the is in the upscale, uh, upper upscale. Upper uh, upscale. Okay. Yeah, is where we're going. Uh, you know, big full service uh, hotels and urban locations, also resorts uh, as well. And um, we're really excited about the brand. We've already got a couple here: uh, one in Minneapolis, uh, one in Chicago. We just opened one in Vancouver. Uh, just recently, so we're excited about the brand, and uh, and Choice is going to be aggressive. We're going to we're going to put our balance sheet to use and, and really grow that Radisson Blue brand. Good, good. Uh, you talked a little bit about the power of the Choice system and and what that means and and the impact of that. Um, I know yesterday you were on the opening session um, talking a little bit about brand families and, and kind of the loyalty, how that's changed among consumers kind of to, to a brand family like Choice. Can you talk a little bit, elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, I, I, I think if you see a lot of the marketing that you're seeing for, with a lot of the brands, people are really becoming loyal to, to the brand family mm-hmm. and they want those points. Yeah. Uh, and so people are really getting, uh, they're loyal to that brand portal. Right, I, I kind of right. call it where uh, you know the, I, I as a leisure traveler and I know exactly what I'm going to get with the choice and the choice brands. I know what kind of rates I'm going to pay. I know I'm going to get my points, uh, and I think it's you're seeing that with, uh, in the industry. Uh, you're seeing a lot of the uh, other other brands as well. They're not really marketing their brands; they're almost marketing the loyalty program. Yes, uh, right. So the brands still count. They still have to be well segmented and have something to offer. Uh, but again, I, th- I think what you're seeing the loyalty of some of these guests, or a lot of the guests, are to the to the brand family, uh, and they want to be in those brands within that brand portal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, extended stay, you know, really hot these days. Uh, new brands coming out almost on a weekly basis. You guys came out with Everhome a couple years ago. How's that gone? How's how, how is the pipeline uh, building up? And, and uh, talk a little bit about the progress. So, do we get credit for we were the first? Uh, if you want yeah, to take credit, sure. sure. Okay. Yeah, uh, we'll give you that. So <laughs> we, uh, so yeah, uh, the, obviously it follow the money, right? Mm-hmm. Extended stay has proved itself through a pandemic mm-hmm. uh, that this is a very hot market, uh, especially with what housing costs are today. Uh, yeah. 
you know, extended stay hotels are working fantastically well. Uh, you know, we, our Woodspring brand, which we purchased a couple years ago, the entire brand runs 80% occupancy with on average, and then on average a 60% GOP. So it, it's a really great uh, value proposition and a return on investment proposition for developers. Yeah. So that's where all the money's going, right? Yeah. And that's why people are starting these brands. Uh, but just because you start a brand doesn't mean it is a brand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we need to have all the systems in place, and Choice really has it down. Uh, we feel like we're the leaders in the extended stay. Uh, we've got the dedicated reservation system. We've got the dedicated uh, global salespeople for room nights. Uh, we know not to add certain costs, or, or um, you know, it really is keeping that that GOP line very high. Uh, so you can't add costs, you can't add people. Uh, the great thing about extended stay, well, like a Woodspring, six and a half FTEs uh, yeah. employees in a hotel. Right, low low operating right. overhead. Yeah. So so that's why you're seeing a lot of the money go into extended stay. Uh, and then, really, no one's. So we we feel like we're the kings of, especially economy extended stay with Woodspring. We launched Everhome before the pandemic started because we really saw that there was a mid scale, true extended stay. There's a lot of mid scale extended stay hotels, but they're not run like extended stay. Uh, right. They're a lot of transient business. So we think we've got the model down. Uh, Everhome's been really exciting. We've got a lot of our Woodspring developers looking to, to build Everhome. We've already got ten under construction. We got another thirty that are going to go under construction next year. Mm-hmm. So we see a lot of legs with that brand as well. Yeah. Um, as we head into the fourth quarter, twenty three, and go and look at twenty four. Uh, what do you, what are you what are your hopes for Choice? What what lies ahead for next year? Uh, high stock price. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, I'm uh, sure you'll have that. Yeah. Uh, it's um, no. We're really excited. Uh, I, Look, we all know that it's not sure, but it's a tough environment. Uh, you know, financing is very tough. Construction costs are very tough. Uh, supply growth is probably going to be, a, you know, one to one and a half percent next year. Uh, so luckily, you know, Choice can pivot very quickly. We have conversion brands as well. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing a lot of conversion activity. We were up about 20 percent in conversions this year uh, versus last year. So we're seeing a lot of opportunity for us. Uh, we're starting to see some segments starting to soften a bit. So people start looking at what brand they have. Uh, and so we're seeing a lot of people looking to choice uh, because they want a better brand opportunity. So I, 23 looks good. 24, let's all hope that uh, the interest rate hikes uh, you know, will yeah. start settling down. And you know, hopefully by the end of 24, we're going to start seeing a reverse on the interest rates, maybe even the spreads at, at least. Right. Uh, and maybe some, uh, some financing will open up for some new construction. Yeah, well. that would be great. Thanks for your time, David. I appreciate it. it. Thanks. Good chat. Right. Thank you for listening to Lodging On Demand. If you want more content like this, subscribe to Lodging Magazine on YouTube. You can also subscribe to Lodging On Demand wherever you get your podcasts. For news and updates, follow at Lodging Magazine on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Or visit us at lodgingmagazine.com.